I'm big and I'm small, but they're both death out of V2s. I'm Techify and here's my comparison with the Razor Death out of V2 versus Death out of V2 Mini. So guys, let's get into this. If you enjoy this video, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and join the Techify Discord. So you'd think these mice are very, very similar. You know, they're both Death out of V2s and that is true in a lot of cases, but there are more differences than you may expect, especially when you get them side by side. If you want more details about these mice, then go watch the full reviews. Now, a lot of these come with the price difference where the Death Adder V2 full size is going to be almost twice the price of the Death Adder V2 Mini in a lot of cases. For me, I know I can pick this up for about £20 right now in the UK, and this cost me about £45. I'd say one of the most key differences is the sensor. The sensor on the Death Adder V2 is upgraded. You get a lower lift off distance, higher maximum DPI of 20,000 versus 8,500. And in general, all the little specs that most of you won't notice on a day-to-day -day basis are going to be better on the Death Adder V2. Supposedly, you would perform a little bit better in game because of that, but I think for most people, they're both good enough sensors that you wouldn't notice that difference. Then there's the weight, and some of that does come with the size. The full-size Death Adder is about 82 grams, which doesn't feel too heavy considering the, the huge size of it. But the Death Adder V2 Mini is a nice lightweight mouse at about 61 grams, which does make it feel a lot more agile and you have more more control over it in my opinion. There is also the extra button and the RGB on the scroll wheel on the full size death adder. One thing that wasn't immediately obvious to me but does seem to be the case is the coating on the death adder v2 full size is slightly different. It just feels a bit more gritty and gets less sweaty feeling after you've been gaming for a while, collects less marks. It is a nicer coating in general and once again I think that's something that comes with the price. Along with that, the other difference is you get the rubber side with a nice grip on the Death Adder V2 full size. It just makes it a bit nicer and more comfortable to use. I don't think it's a big deal personally, but it's definitely a nice thing to have. I think though none of these features that I've mentioned being different, and there may be a couple more small ones, are deal breakers. I think when you're looking, if you want one of these two mice, you definitely want a Death Adder. Which one should you buy? I think shape is the thing you should consider. I have done a video recently talking about why your gaming mouse may be too big for you and I suggest you go watch that if you're thinking about getting the big death adder as you're going to have to have very big hands for this to be the better mouse. If you're a palm user then unless you've got really small hands then yes okay get the death adder v2. If you're a claw user then for a lot of people I'm going to say the death adder v2 mini is going to be the better shape. My hands are about 17 centimeters by 8.5 centimeters. And the Death Adder V2 Mini is just a much more comfortable shape and size for me. Definitely, if you've got smaller hands, 100% you need to be getting the Mini. And if you've got a bit bigger hands than me, even then, still the Mini might be a better option for you to get a nice, secure grip on it. The huge width and size of the full-size Death Adder just makes it much more difficult to get a really good grip and control on it. Fingertip users, I think there's no chance with a big Death Adder. That being said, the little ergonomic shape on the V2 Mini isn't great for it either. It could work, but I think... You might as well just buy the Viper Mini instead if you're a fingertip user. And I think the same applies for Claw users. I think the Viper Mini might be a better option. I do have a video comparing the Death Adder V2 Mini to the Viper Mini, so make sure you go check that out. So then for the rest of the stuff, you get Razer's optical clicks on both. They feel pretty similar. If anything, they do feel slightly better on the Death Adder V2 full size. I feel like they should be the same switch. Maybe it's either because I've used this one more or because these are newer, maybe they did actually put some better switches in this one, isn't going to affect your gameplay at all, and it is worth bearing in mind you cannot drag click with the optical switches. For the cables, they're the same Razer, Speedflex, whatever they call it, cable. They're pretty good cables, and I've got no complaints with them. The feet, as far as I can tell, are the same. Obviously, you get a bit more surface area on the full-size Death Adder. Both are perfectly adequate and good for the mouse. You get a nice smooth glide, and they feel really good. As with all the recent Razer mice I've reviewed, the build quality is very good. It's absolutely solid and I've had no issues with that. Both are very solid mice, even with the light weight of just 60 grams. Well, which one should you buy? I think you should ignore the sensor upgrade in the V2 and focus on the shape. If you're a palm user, unless your hands are tiny, then get the Death Adder V2. If you're a claw user, if you've got medium or small hands, V2 mini. If you've got really big hands, V2. And if you're a fingertip user, buy neither, go buy a Viper mini. If you chose the Death Adder V2 Mini, then go check out my review of the Death Adder V2 Mini versus Viper Mini, as that may be a better option for you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.